What's it mean to be emotionally invalidated? Let's talk about this on today's Ask a Shrink. Chances are if you grew up in any kind of dysfunctional family, your feelings were invalidated. Or maybe you're currently in a relationship where your feelings are being invalidated. Either way, it means we're being X'd out. There's nobody really there. We're not being valued for what we're sharing, who we really are. On the one hand, it can be done intentionally to perhaps manipulate or gaslight you. That could be done, for example, by something like, oh, you sound like you're exaggerating. Or it could be done unintentionally where somebody's just trying to brighten up your day, trying to always be positive, always looking at the bright side of things, which is not always helpful. So that could be done by somebody saying something like, oh, just count your blessings, or I've learned everything happens for a reason. Well, that may not be helpful to you right now, depending on what you're going through, and hence you feel like your feelings are being invalidated. They're being whitewashed in a way. Now, if you get used to being emotionally invalidated through your childhood, of course you're going to bring that into your adult relationships. And basically, no matter what, this causes some distrust, some confusion, perhaps a sense of disbelief. What's going on here? Now, there's the verbal communication that I just mentioned, but there's also lots of nonverbal ways for this to happen. A 13-year-old growing up trying to share with a parent that they've been depressed and having a lot of anxiety lately, and the mother doing something like, ugh, <sighs> ugh. Or you're trying to get your boyfriend or girlfriend's attention. They're on their laptop. Something important you want to say or share. Pouring it out and they look up from their laptop after everything is said and they go, mm-hmm. And then quickly go back to work. Well, talk about invalidation. Or there's a gray area with it too. Sometimes somebody maybe is listening to your feelings. They're expressing or explaining a particular situation. They're taking it in, but then they're downplaying it somehow. Now oh, that does sound like a tough day, a really difficult day for you, but you always have been one to overreact to things. That's going to potentially cause a rift between these two people because the one that needs to be heard is not being heard and it's either going to cause trouble in the relationship or the person not being heard is going to internalize this and somehow there must be something wrong with me. Nobody seems to really care. They're, they're denying what I went through. And so they may start denying it and considering it as nothing important when in reality it may be very important. Now there's various reasons for the invalidation of the person doing it. They may be a narcissist. They only care about their own feelings. Or somebody could be so wrapped up in what they're going through, their life, they're in their head, they just are not able to focus on or take in what another person is saying. The person listening may have a real hard time working with their own feelings. Feelings are a big no-no, so of course they don't want to hear and share and take in your feelings. They have enough of their own that they've blocked or dissociated from, so now they're trying to dissociate from your feelings in a way. At that point, they may say things like, that didn't happen. Would you please quit making things up? You know, you're just so sensitive. You take everything so personally. Or even just flat out, you know, I just don't want to have this conversation. It's something I won't talk about. If it's a child, they're not going to know what to do with these complicated feelings that they're trying to express, perhaps. You have to be able to talk to your mother and father. Who else are you going to talk to? You're a little kid. Or we're dating somebody, getting serious. Maybe we're even married now and we feel invalidated. That's not a healthy way to go through a relationship. This can cause mental health issues for the person not being heard. This can cause the person to doubt themselves, which then means they're probably going to struggle with their own identity development and then likely struggle with their own emotions, especially if it comes from a parent, because a child will begin to distrust themselves. Well, I, I guess my own mother or father are not believing me or they surely don't want to hear it. So I don't know what to do with these feelings. So of course, a distrust of self is going to set in. The person not being heard definitely feels unimportant and probably somewhat invisible. Because whether it's with family or friends, a husband or wife, emotional validation is the core of a healthy relationship. We want to feel love for who we are and we want to love other people who they are. How can we do that if we're pushing away or invalidating their experience, their feelings? When it happens in a marriage, the person not being heard may be thinking like, am I being really irrational here, immature, irresponsible? 
These are questions to ask yourself. Perhaps in couples therapy, a couple can explore this. Now there's a chance that they may be. That's something to learn about themselves if they are being that way. But there's also the chance that may take some further exploration for them to realize somebody that they love, they just don't want to believe it's possible. Somebody they care for is actually invalidating them. In a romantic relationship, sometimes that's hard to see because we just don't want to believe it's true. A husband, a wife, a boyfriend, a girlfriend believes, well, I have to swallow my feelings in order to be in this relationship. And then, of course, if they stay, they're going to probably resent that other person for making them feel this way. Why can't I be heard? Why are they not listening to me? I'm tired of swallowing my feelings all the time. And what's tricky and very insidious with emotional invalidation is it could be done in a way that's very casual, nonchalant, sort of like this is just normal. They're actually being very insulting by denying your feelings, but it seems like no big deal at the time. Well, to the person on the receiving end of this, this can feel like a big rejection. And really what therapists find in either family therapy or couples counseling, if everybody comes in and works on this, is the person who's doing the invalidating is really doing it because they're not in touch whatsoever with their own feelings and actually are afraid of dealing with feelings and that's simply being projected onto the people around them in their lives. When parents or a spouse have to listen to these very vulnerable, raw emotions, more than likely it's triggering something in them that they don't want to deal with and hence they invalidate. For them, the bottom line is it's all about protecting their sense of self. That's where it stems from. We can see how this is very complicated in a romantic relationship, right? It's not going to be a healthy relationship. And we can also see how it's very unhealthy for a child to grow up with parents who treat them this way. So if you're the one invalidating other people's feelings, you have to look within and ask yourself what this is all about within you. There's a reason you're invalidating people's feelings. And then you can begin practicing different ways of interacting with people. For example, instead of saying, oh, just get over it, try saying, what can I do to help? Or instead of saying something like, you know, you're kind of exaggerating, try saying that sounds like that was a really hard thing to go through. So all of this can be learned if somebody's willing to learn it. And for the recipient, the person being invalidated, you're going to have to start to learn to validate your own feelings. That's through a lot of self-love and self-care that you own and love your feelings. They're there for a reason. What are they all about? They're worth exploring, right? They're a part of you. Number one, find relationships with people who respect you and want to validate your feelings. It's a big red flag if that's not happening. And also begin to learn to listen to your gut feeling, your intuition. This may tie into parents who gaslit you, you brainwashed you, manipulated you while you were growing up. How's a child that's raised like that going to trust themselves, trust their own feelings? It's going to be a rough journey for them to get to that point where they can do that, but it is doable. Usually this happens through some therapeutic work. And with some honest reflection, ask yourself, well, do I have a lot of self-doubt? Am I very insecure? There's nothing wrong with that. Just know that that is a possibility if you're feeling that way and then go and explore that with the therapist. What's that about? And is that playing out in a way that people in your life may be invalidating you? So none of this is about a judgment. It's basically just trying to understand ourselves and how these things pop up and percolate up in our lives so we can begin to deal with them if they're causing problems in our relationships. So lots to think about here. Emotional invalidation is very hurtful in our lives. Please leave some comments below if you'd like to chime in anything. Maybe you've been a victim of emotional invalidation in your life. Please subscribe to my mental health YouTube channel if you like these kind of videos. And until next week, this is Brad Shore signing off from Ask a Shrink.